Happy Father's Day to everyone who is uh, watching us, lahat ng mga tatay na kasama natin. And even if you are with your father, you know, okay, uh, I want to encourage you maybe text your father kung medyo malayo or nga, if, if kasama mo ngayon, maybe greet mo naman sa kanya na Happy Father's Day, whether you are young or old. And if, if meron ka pang tatay, you know, cherish that. You know, I, I, I realized as uh, I was preparing a message for uh, today, you know, for our Father's Day, I realized there are so many people na iba't iba yung situation na ngayon na nag, mag, mag, celebrate ng Father's Day. Some are celebrating, like me, for the second time. Okay, some are celebrating uh, for the first time. Yung iba naman, it's quite different for them. Um, maybe for some, even, you are celebrating decades of being a father. You are celebrating a father that has been there for you. While others are, are grieving. You know, may, may just sad because they've lost their father recently. Some are, you know, maybe hindi okay with family. And so, iba't iba yung situation natin. But I really hope that as you stay with us and as you hear the preaching of the word, you know, God would minister to you and God would really work something in your heart and even in your relationship with your father. Today, we are starting uh, another, uh, the second week pala ng series natin, which is Life Together. Last week, Pastor Lee already started uh, by, by, ta- by, by, by telling us, okay, the foundation of, you know, a fruitful and a strong marriage is really not just emotion, but it is uh, obedience. It's not just affection. It's not just gifts. It's not just all the external things, but it really starts with having a strong relationship with Jesus. And today, naman, we're going to be jumping to our second week, which is going to be about the relationship of fathers to children, or pwedeng natin sabihin of parents, okay, to children. Kasi kahit naman, uh, y- you know, even if you're a mom, I know you can also relate with the message that we're going to be talking about today. So why don't you join me as I read Ephesians 5, verse 21. It says here, Ephesians 5, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 3, Paul says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke to anger, but do, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Lord, we just come to you today. And just like what we were singing a while ago, Lord, we believe your love for us. We believe, Lord, that that is the starting point. And so as we listen today, God, I know that there will be so many probably memories that will come. Very probably some things that would come out. But Lord, Father, we we pray today that we would hear from you and that we would receive, Lord, the life that you are willing to give to us. The love that we need so that we can love our children and that we can also, and, and, and even the children can also love their parents. Lord, we need you because without you, Lord, all of this is nothing. But with you, Lord, you can bring life and you can bring transformation to every relationships. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Families, okay? Families, we're talking about families. And the thing about families is families uh, bring a lot of joy. Tama po ba? F- families just have a power to bring so much life and so much joy to someone and it can really change someone's childhood or even their entire life. But at the same time, if family brings a lot of joy, the reality is family can also bring a lot of pain. And a lot of the pain is coming from differences. Now, may mga differences na okay lang na maliliit na bagay, pero may mga difference din na mga malalaki. If last week, Pastor Lee was talking about the husbands and wives, may mga differences, you know, because may mga strength yung husband, na, na hindi strength nung asawa, pwedeng may pareho sila, may, I mean, all of these things, magkaiba ng mga gusto, ng pananaw, ng love language, all of this stuff, pwedeng magkakaroon ng, magkaroon ng mga pagkakaiba, and some can work it out, and actually can work better at it, while other people 
might have a hard time working it out. Some people might have conflict because of it. Some people might even leave it just like that and eventually it can blow up and pwedeng maging disaster. And while that is true sa mag it's also very true sa, mga, sa, sa relationship ng magulang at ng anak, ain't it? Isn't that true? Na pagdating, whether you are a young child today or maybe you are a bit old, young professional ka na, you can still relate to this. And even for some of you na medyo, uh, uh, may, may asawa ka na, hindi medyo, may asawa ka na, okay? Tapos nagka, meron kayong interaction ng magulang mo, you can still fight, you can still feel that there is some sort of difference. May differences of views. My differences of perspective, my differences of mga likes and dislikes, my differences of mga conviction, my differences sa era, my differences of values, and my difference lalong lalo na sa language. Right? And kapag merong differences and we don't know how to work out the difference, again, it can create conflict. At mahirap kapag merong conflict. Because if yung conflict hindi natin kaya ng irresolve, pwedeng makasira yan in the long term. Like ano ba yung mga case? For example, let me I'll give you a few ideas of ano ba yung mga areas na nagkakaroon tayo ng mga conflict. For example, money. Yung iba, yung 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 anak gusto pa dito ako mag-spend ng money while for some naman sa magulang, di ba? Anak, pwede ko ba itago muna? Gimatas na pag na manasa na yung pinatago ko, ay ano na ano, pinatago naman, nagkakaroon ng mga away-away, curfew. Grabe, ang strict naman ni daddy. Ano strict? May ako nga, nung, nung bata nga ako, oh, nasa is pa lang, nasa bahay na naman. Nagkaka, may, may pagkakaiba. Interest and hobbies. Anak, pwede bang you are into uh, a fencing? Uh, daddy, hindi ako mas sports eh. Dad, alam mo sa pamilya natin, may, may mga ganyang differences. Diet. Yung nanay mo, nagkito bigla. Ikaw, ma, gusto mo sangyup, di ba? Medyo, ma, ma, nagkakaiba grades, pets, fashion. Yung, yung, yung before, ma, ma, okay na okay, di ba? Yung, yung mga uh, elephant pants, tapos ngayon parang hindi na. Gusto mo medyo bitin na, samantalang dati, pag bitin, parang may mali ba sa pantalon mo? Gadget news, agawan sa remote, sa internet, sa wifi, spending habits. Um, chores, room cleaning, all of these areas, relationships, belief, this place of affection, all of this, pwede magkaroon ng mga difference and it can create a sort of conflict. Now, here's the thing, that can get ugly with words, with cold uh, treatment. That's why if hindi tayo again marunong maghandal ng conflict between parents between fathers and children do na papasok yung mga scenario na yung 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 anak ayaw nang i-honor yung nanay o yung tatay ayaw nang makinig ayaw na magbigay ng oras ayaw na maniwala ayaw na ma- matuto yun na is yun na pumapasok yung yung space nagiging wider dati lagi kayong okay pero ngayon medyo nagkakaroon na ng gap tapos eventually the communication gets thinner kumain ka na ba oh okay na ako and it's all because nangyari kasi nung grade 5 pa, ito yung ginawa mo, pero ito, hindi ka nag-sorry. All of those things can destroy our relationships and even the parent side. If they don't know how to take that, if we don't know, including me, we might take that as rebellion. And we might react in a way na kahit na okay yung puso natin, we might react in a way that is very negative and not appropriate. Therefore, adding more harm to the relationships. Now, here's the thing. For some of us, we might say, eh, normal lang naman sa pamilya na magkaroon ng problema. Which is, by the way, which is true. I, I, I do agree na, you know, kung baga sa mag-asawa, nagkakaroon ng mga problema. Sa pamilya, normal yan. Tao tayo eh. But here's the thing though. While problems are normal, I want you to make note of it. Dysfunctions are not are you with me? Problems are normal, but dysfunctions are not. Broken families is not part of God's design. Estranged families, families that are at war and reconciled, I believe that is not the design of God. That's why first 
of all, I want us to know this, that God had a good design and has a good design in mind for families. When God thought of families, He thought about it in a glorious way. You know, the, 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 the design of God when it comes to family is not dysfunction. It's not disaster. It's not trauma. It's not error. It's not drama. It's not to add burden. Hindi po ganon yung plano ng Panginoon sa mga pamilya. I know, ang dami nangyayaring ganon, pero hindi po ganon yung plano ng Panginoon. Yung, pang, yung plano po ng Panginoon natin is good. It's a design that is meant to bless, and it's a design that is meant to also build up. But in order for that to happen, we need to keep in mind a few things. We need to have the right designer, okay, or the one who really thought of the foundation of a family. We need that person to step in, which is God, and we need his blueprint for families. That's why Paul writes to the church because he knows yung church na kinakausap niya sa Ephesus is a group of mixed people. May mga children, may mga parents. He's not just talking to one specific age group, but he is talking to a diverse group. And he starts by saying this in Ephesians 4. Sabi niya, now, I, now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. Sinabi muna ni, ni, ni Paul, there is a way that seems right to the world. Meron parang, ay, it makes sense na ganun, magbigay lang ng pera, ay, ganito lang, mag, 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 mag uh, uh, just manandong ka lang sa mga graduation, ay, ganito lang. But, but Paul is saying, it might seem famous, pinapalakpakan, norm, but it doesn't mean that's what God had planned for you. Kaya sabi niya, don't walk in the way of a person that does not believe in God, but rather, sabi niya in, the, in, this, in, the, in this next verse, but rather go back to God. They're darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. So, sabi niya dito, kailangan natin ng bagong puso. Hindi magfo-flourish ang pamilya kung lahat matigas yung puso. Kasi kung matigas yung puso, eventually tumitigas yung ulo. At kapag matigas yung ulo ng mga nasa pamilya, laging nagkakaroon ng gulo at away. That's why, sabi niya, kailangan mo ng bagong puso. Kailangan natin itong lahat. Moving forward to verse 22 and 24, put off your old self and then put on the new. Huwag, huwag nating dalhin sa mga pamilya natin yung dati natin mga nakasanayin, yung dating buhay natin na puro pride, full of self, puro of reputation, puro ideology na kung sino-sino at kung ano-ano, but be rather renewed in the spirit of your minds. Put on your new self, created after who? Sabi dito, created after the likeness of God. In truth, in true righteousness and holiness. So, bago tayo pumunta doon sa mas, alam mo yun, yung mas, yung diretsyo na ng mga instruction, Paul is laying down the foundation first. Pag binasa mo yung book of Ephesians, yun yung unang hati niya. The first three to four chapters talks about the gospel first. Paul knows that before I talk about all these things, the practical things, I need us to understand the gospel first. Because the gospel is the solution. God is the solution. Because it's not, we're not just talking about habits externally, we're talking about something deep within that needs to be renewed and changed. That's why, sabi after ni Paul, madil yung mga patterns na nasa puso natin, he says in chapter 5, be imitators of God. That's the model. As beloved children, let us imitate God the way we father and the way we walk as children. Be imitators of God. Don't be an imitator of your neighbor. <laughs> Don't be an imitator of kung sino sino dyan. But be imitators of God and walk in love the way that God defines love. For at one time you were in darkness. Tapos paulit-ulit yung sinasabi to. Walk in as children of light. Look carefully how you walk, not as unwise. Sinasabi niya, because this is who you are now that you are in Jesus. Therefore, walk in a way that will honor God. Now, after talking about this, he goes on to say, submit then yourself out of reverence for Christ. 
because you know how much God loves you, how much Jesus loves you, submit yourself to Him. And then He goes on now to say, ano ngayon yung design? Ano yung itsura? And let me be very practical on this part. And let me start by saying, both father and children need to be submitted to God. That is the starting point. Hindi lang po yung mga anak natin yung kailangan ng Panginoon. But let us be honest, we also need it as parents. Our parents doesn't need just a fathering. But as fathers, we need fathering as well. We need God to step in the pictures of our lives into our, our, our messy hearts so we can know what is right so when we go back to our children, we can also do what is right. I know this because as much as I'm fathering my daughter, as much as I'm praying, the Lord palakhin mo siya in the right way, I also feel, Lord, I need what I'm teaching my daughter. Lord, kailangan ko rin to. Kailangan ko nung gospel. Kailangan ko to. That's why he goes on to say this now in, 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 in verse 1 to 3 in chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Let me break that down in a few minutes, no? Children. Sabi niya. Now, when Paul uses the word children, he is not talking to little kids. He is talking to people who are under the authority and under the shelter of their parents' house. And in their context, this can be a child, and this can go up to a point where yung, yung, uh, pwedeng mag-asawa na. Pero dahil nandun pa rin sila under the roof of their parents, they're considered in their culture as children. And some of you who are watching this, you're still living with your parents, and you know what? This applies to you. But for some of you, you are outside na, ng, sa, sa, sa uh, shelter nung, and provision ng magulang nyo. You know what? It might be different, but don't check out because there's still something here for you. Okay? And so, let me break this down. Sabi niya, obey your parents. Listen attentively and do what God is telling you to do. As if your parents, di ba? Kapag sabi ng magulang na gawin mo yung tama, sabi niya, obey, pakinggan mo. Don't just feel it. Sometimes there is an idea that when we talk about love and obeying and honoring our parents, it's all about just words and emotions. I, I honor you. I feel for, I love you. But here's the thing. Paul was not saying, think right for your parents. He doesn't feel mo yung parents mo. Paul is saying, obey your parents. You are under the authority of your parents and if you're under their as long as hindi mali yung pinapagawa ng magulang mo, Paul is saying, obey your parents. Now, when I was young, I didn't understand a lot of things. I didn't understand kung saan ang gagaling yung magulang ko. Bata ako eh. I didn't understand. There, there were things na parang, it, it makes sense that it's right, but I didn't want to do it because I had my own version of right. <laughs> What's convenient for me? And, 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 and I realized all the more when I think about it, now that I'm older, sana pala nakinig ako sa mga sinabi ng magulang ko. Hindi sila perfect. But now I realize, tama yung sinasabi nila. It wasn't for their good only, but it was really for my good. And I know as you're listening to this, sana ganun lahat ng magulang. But I do believe every, at some point, there, in, in, in a parent that is in the right minds, they, they might not be perfect in their actions. But again, they're coming from a heart of care, of love, of genuine concern. And Paul is saying, obey your parents because it is right. Now, for some of us, minsan, madaling sundin yung pastor. Pero hindi yung tatay ko. Madaling sundin yung kapitbahay. Madaling sundin yung sabi ng celebrity na to. Pero minsan ayaw nating sundin yung magulang natin. When the reality is, when something hits your life, it's your parents that's always there for you. Kapag nagka-loko-loko na yung buhay mo, kanina ka tumatakbo. Marami mga instances, tumatakbo ka kung kanino-kanino, tapos pababayaan ka lang. Pero dun sa magulang mo, yun talaga yung may pagmamahal malabis-labis sa'yo. Obey your parents in the Lord. This pertains to actions. 
Some of you today, I want to ask you that question. You know, what is God calling you to do today to obey your parents? Because I want to encourage you, children, express your love for God by obeying and honoring your parents. And the parents say, Amen. <laughs> Tama, di ba? Now, yung mga, yung mga parents, wait ka lang. Okay, mamaya. Okay, pag-uusapan natin yung side mo. And sa mga, sa mga children, huwag kayo mag-alala. Okay, may side yung mga parents. But really, let's express our love towards God in a way that honors our parents. That's the great, that's the, that's the thing that's confusing nowadays for some people because they'll say, I love God. But when it comes to their family, it doesn't really even reflect the way they treat their parents. They treat them like trash, like disposable relationships. And I, want, and I want us to know that God, wala pong hati na mag-serve ka sa church, pero pabayahan mo yung pamilya mo. What God wants is for our relationship with Him to affect our relationship with our fathers and our mothers. Sabi ni Paul, obey them in the Lord. Because this is pleasing to the Lord. You do it, hindi para makahirit sa magulang. How many of you ginagawa niyo? <laughs> you obey your parents because meron kang darating na order ng Lazada o Shopee. Di ba? You, you do it because you're gonna get something out of it. But here, Paul is saying you do it because you're doing it for the Lord. See, when I think about obedience, obedience is a huge distraction. <laughs> diba? If you're gonna obey something, lalo na you are in the middle of a game, you are in the zone, you are in the, alam mo yun, you are in the heat of the moment, tapos sinabi ng anak, nung, nung magulang mo, anak, magwalis ka naman, maghugas, parang, bad trip. Inconvenient siya. Because you are looking at something else and then someone comes else, which is someone, someone else comes in, which is your parents, and says, Anak, pwede mo bang gawin to? And in your mind, ma, this is my life. Pa, meron akong gustong gawin. Pero, that's the thing. When you're walking in God, it's not about you anymore. It's about what is pleasing to God. I like the other word that Paul uses. Sabi niya, uh, do it, obey, and honor. Honor is a matter of, of attitude. Yung iba kasi nag obey pero nagdadabog. Ano ba naman yan? Bira naman dito. Patulong ba ka dito? Yung, iba, yung, yung attitude ng puso natin, concerned din ni God yan. God wants to have, to ha- for us to have a joyful heart regarding our parents. Sabi niya, do it because this is right. Do it not because it's convenient, but do it, obey and honor your parents because, you know, it's right. I remember when, when I was young, you know, may mga kaibigan tayong nambubuyo. Di ba? Tol, nanay ko, nag-aaway na naman kami. Tatay ko, grabe. Di ba? Tapos ano sasabihin ng mga tropa mo minsan? KJ, yung mga magulang, magbusod din. Gawin mo yung gusto mo. Ano ba yung film mo? Ito, gusto pare. O, yan, yan, gawin mo. Ikaw yung masusunod sa buhay mo. Ikaw yung tama. But now I realize it. I was young. And I didn't know the value of my relationship with my parents. That it's a gift. It's a gift that I can never replace with anything. Amen? And so, kahit na hindi ka palakpakan ng mundo, I want to encourage you, do what is right before God. Kita man ng mga kaibigan mo or whatever, do it. Okay? It is right not because I said it's right. It's right because God says it's right. Now, the last thing when it comes to children, there is a promise that God wants for you. Now, yung promise na to, it's not a promise na kapag sinunod mo yung magulang mo habang buhay, guess what? Y- y- hindi ka natatanda. Uh, guess what? Meron ka ng fountain of youth. Hindi po ganun yung sinasabi dito ni Paul. But what he's trying to say, if you think about it, if you live a life na harmonious yung relationship mo sa magulang mo, can you just think of the stress na mawawala? Can you just think of the joy 
that comes in. Can you just think of the security, the, 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 uh, the peace that can come, right? If you are with, a, with that kind of vibrant relationship with your parents, your life, our lives can be so much different. And what is Paul is saying is if you start obeying the design of God. And children, if you play your role faithfully in that family, which is to obey your parents, which is doing their best to honor God and to think of you, guess what? It's going to give you long life. If you read the book of Proverbs, it would say again and again, children, obey your parents because if you obey your parents, their commands is a necklace to your neck and it's a crown in your head. It talks about it's something precious. They're passing on to you gems of knowledge. You know, not just textbook uh, knowledge, but really experiences that can change and save you from disaster. That's what I love about my parents. And that's why I honor you, ma, pa. If you're listening to this, I honor you. Because though hindi perfect yung buhay ko, really, you made a way. And God helped me to really obey you. And because of that, I get to live this life this way. But here's the thing, it doesn't end with children. Of course, meron din part yung magulang. And let me spend the rest of my time talking about the role of the parents. Now, Paul says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not push their buttons. Do not be so personal to them that it, it, it invades their privacy, that you are out of line. But then again, sabi ni Paul, know your role. What is your role in the kingdom of God? What is your role in the family that God has, pos- that, that God has positioned you in? You see, sometimes, if you think about it, as a father right now, mas madali pong mga asar, mas madali pong mga provoke, mas natural, mas normal mga asar ng anak. <laughs> Kasi nakakatuwang mga asar eh. But it, there are so many times that I realize, James, that's not your role. Inaagawan mo yung, inaagawan mo ng role yung enemy. Ikaw pa yung umumukuha ng role. You know? So, that's not your role. Your role as a father is to nurture your children. You know, in the same way that the parents, uh, the child is supposed to express their love towards God through honoring and obeying their parents. You know, fathers, I want to encourage you, and even parents who are watching this, express your love for God by discipling your children towards God. Disciple them. Don't leave that to the church. There are campus missionaries, there are pastors, there are staff, there's victory group leaders that can help you, but it's your primary role to disciple your children. They always say this ministry starts at home. And I believe, you know, that's something that, that I have really learned from the leaders. They would always say, my first victory group is my children. It's not this group of people, it's my children because they nasa pamamahay ko. Fathers, I want to talk to you right now and I want to remind you, this is your calling. This is your a privilege God has given you. Don't give it to someone else. Don't give it to the TV. Don't give it to social media. Don't give it, don't delegate the role of being a father because that is a role that God has given you. Eh, bakit yung, yung, yung ibang ka-opisina, huwag ganda lang, I, huwag mo isipin yun. Isipin mo ano yung pinapagawa sa'yo ng Panginoon. Because that is what would matter for eternity. You know, if you would try to capture what Paul was trying to say to the fathers, Paul was saying, nurture. That's your role, to nurture your child. Your child is like a seed. And your role there is to water it. Your role is sometimes to plow the ground. Your role is, is to play an active role. If needed ng shade, if needed ng protection ng seed, that's your role. It's a heavy role. It's a role that you're going to be committing your whole life to. But it's a role that if you do it right, it will be the greatest joy for your life. 
If you think about it, the uh, Psalms, Psalms tell us that a child is like an arrow. But before, a, but before an arrow, it is just a simple wood. And so, yung role na yun ng tatay is to come into the picture. And here's the first thing that Paul mentions. You're supposed to discipline. Okay? You're supposed to give tough love. Not breaking, not violence, but tough love. Because the, yung nakikita mo dun sa wood, hindi nakikita ng mundo. Yung nakikita ng mundo is yung kahoy na yun, pwedeng ipangpatong lang sa kung saan-saan. Pwedeng ipangkalso lang sa kung saan-saan. But as a father, you know the potential of that wood. And you know that someday, this wood, if you would refine it right, if you would give the right love, if you would give the toughness that it needs, then what it will become is it will become an arrow. And someday, if you pull it hard, you're gonna have to let it go. And when it hits the target, you're confident that your child is not just a wood falling to the ground, but it's an arrow hitting its destiny. That's our role. Our role as fathers is to discipline. Hindi po yung disciplinarian na puro ha, cold. Hindi, dapat ito yung, ito yung batas. Hindi din po yan li- liberatarian as well. Na parang binibigyan mo lang ng liberty. Express yourself. Huwag mong paluin. What do you... you, you, you Paul is saying, if you go back to the description of the Bible, what, what, what discipline is, discipline is love. If you care, you discipline. I discipline my child, not because I hate her, not because I want to lash out on her, not because she's inconvenient, but I discipline her because I know someday, anak, mawawala ako sa picture. At pag nawala ako sa picture, I want you to continue soaring. I want you to continue to do what God has called you to do. And when's the best time to prepare her for that? Not five years, not ten years, not when she's older, but today. That's your role. That is our role as fathers. It's a calling, again. It's a calling that God is willing to empower us, to help us. Last but not the least is instruct them. Now, here's the thing, okay? When it comes to instruction, now, ito yung nakaka, nakakapagod at times. Kasi papaulit-ulitin mo eh, okay? But yung ibig sabihin ng instruction is counseling, it's warning, it's giving guidance. Ibig sabihin po nito, yung picture po nito is when you speak to your child, you listen to them. You don't compare yourself to them. Minsan may, may, may mga ganyan tayo eh. Anak, ako, ako, gayahin mo. Eh, 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 no, 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 no. There's a time for that. But there's also a time for instruction. Instruction, not bragging, not boasting, not trying to, uh, anong tawag nito? Force something, but instructing them. Instructing them to do what is right. Instructing them what will honor God. Now, that's a lot of work, if you imagine, if you think about it. That's inconvenient. Yung anak ko po, minsan, sasabihin niya, Daddy, sit. Kasi naglalaro siya ng Lego. At minsan, meron pong yung mga Lego, meron niya mga instruction eh. And sometimes, I would tell her, Anak, dapat ilagay mo to, kasi pag nilagay mo, magbibuild up, tas ang ganda, magiging ganto, ganto yung itsura. Sabihin niya, No, Daddy. This, play this, daddy. Sirain niya. And how many of you would know, sometimes that's gonna take a lot of, anak, anak, wait lang. Anak, merong design eh. Anak, magtiwala ka, anak. Anda, kailangan po ng patience nun. Kailangan ko pong mag-instruct. Hindi ko po kailangan, anak, alam mo, huwag na maglaro, ako nagagawa. <laughs> Hindi po ganun yung role ng tatay. The role of the father is to instruct. And the fruit of this, when you instruct your child, is you will strengthen your family. You would bless your children. And not just that, but you will build generations. 
Generations of women who knows what is right. Generations of men who are going to stand up and stake their lives for what is right. It starts with fathers doing an active role. Not delegating or abdicating the role, but embracing their God-given call to honor Him. Now, as I wrap this up, can you just imagine a society like that? Can you imagine a society na buo yung mga pamilya? That's, that's a dream. When I was thinking about that, just, can you just imagine, wow, growing up with a father that I can call, that I can talk to, that I have no fear, but I, I, I'm growing up with my father, and, and, and I have a child that merong coming relationship, and I'm there to see her thrive, to see her grow, to see her or him, you know, to just to... That, 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 that would make an impact in society. That's going to change our economy. We're going to have businessmen doing what is right, not fearing what people will say, whatever it is, because meron silang integridad. Kasi nakita ko kay daddy at mami. Can you just imagine if people would go into politics and they would do what is right and stand up for what's right because I saw it in my family. Marriage not falling apart because I saw it with my father. I saw it in my mother. I saw they honor God. And they taught me how. The world would change. The next generation who is having a lot of issues nowadays. Pwedeng magbago. If we embrace the design of God in our life. Again, my friends, God has a glorious design for families. God did not intend families to break down, but God has intended to make families work, to last, and to a blessing, to be a blessing to generations. What do we need for that design to function? We need both father and child to be submitted to God. Now, in some cases, maybe the father is not submitted to God. But you know what? It doesn't mean you're going to make that an excuse not to do what's right, not to do what is honoring. If you can honor your parents because of something they've done that is wrong, honor them for who they are. I always tell students na, you know what, hindi perfect yung magulang mo, pero yung nanay mo, alam mo, kineri ka niyan for nine months. I tell them, alam mo, yung tatay mo, siguro hindi ganun ka-perfect, pero alam mo, nag, at, nag, 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 nagpakahirap din yan para sa'yo. Find a way to honor them. When was the last time you honored your parents? Some of you, when, is the last, when was the last time that you, you, you obeyed your parents? Fathers, when was the last time that you disciplined your child out of love? That you said, Anak, I see a future in you, but it cannot be, it cannot happen if you're going to operate your life this way. When was the last time that you instructed your parent, your, your, your child? My friends, if we fear that if we discipline and we instruct ang KJ natin, it's because our relationship with them is not deep enough. But if we know that they know that we care and we love them, to discipline them and to instruct them, hindi sila may hirapan. Hindi sila magugulahan na akala ko ba mahal hindi. For them, may intindihan nila, ay grabe, ginagawa to ni daddy kasi mahal niya, mahal niya ako. When you go back to God and God disciplines you, it's painful at times, but you know, Lord, it's just because you have the best in mind for me. That's why the best way to learn how to be a father 
to be reconciled to the Father. And the best way to know how to be a son is to follow the Son, which is Jesus. If you look at their life, and this is the last thing that I want to say before we wrap this up. Jesus obeyed His Father. And Jesus would always say, I do what my Father tells me to do. What I saw my Father do. Jesus showed us that this is how it's supposed to work. And at the same time, we see that the Father was there to instruct Jesus, to guide His Son. And we see how perfect that relationship was. And that relationship was broken when sin, when He was on the cross and Jesus took our sin, and Jesus said, why have you forsaken? What destroys families is sin. But what reconciles families is the love of God. Because God's love is powerful enough to wipe away every fear. It allows us to be freed from condemnation, from sin, and from guilt. I want us to bow down our heads right now. Father, we lay down our pride right now. Lord, if some of us are watching and hindi okay yung relationship namin with our Father, or maybe coming anak, sa magulang namin or maybe yung magulang sa anak either way Lord reveal to us or the problem and what can we do about it and Lord if it's asking for forgiveness if it's initiating a conversation God give us the courage and the faith to go and step out and obey what you're telling us to do. Lord, we know that you have the best in mind for us. Lord, we know that your plan is good, it's perfect, and it's pleasing. And may it be that in our obedience, the world will see that you are God, that you are a covenant-keeping God, that you are a faithful God who will not leave us ashamed. God, maraming maraming salamat because yung plano mo sa mga pamilya namin is hindi para masira to at mabuwag. Ang plano mo is lumakas yung pamilya namin to be by at maging blessing sa kapitbahay, sa mga pamilya, at sa kung saan-saan pa. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name.